My name's um, Mark Partington and I'm the Director of Operations for the Trust. Um, as Dan says, we've got, a, we've got a story in three parts for you really, which is uh, myself uh, telling you a bit about the, uh, the, the organisation's approach corporately and from an executive's point of view, uh, and then some real detail from some of our clinical people and our service improvement uh, people. Um, so the sort of headline, 6,000 staff, 320 million quid we spend uh, operating income a, a year, and we have about three quarters of a million um, patient contacts uh, a year in, in, uh, in, different, uh, in different settings. 2009, we felt, was a, a pivotal time for our uh, trust in, in that we got two things. We got, we got the development and an agreement on a quality improvement strategy, uh, and we also commenced our relationship with, uh, with somebody called the, the Lean Enterprise Academy. Um, and what that did was confirmed our need to continue delivering the re regulatory framework. We can't, as much as we'd like to, we can't throw that away because of all I've said before about how the regulator can materially hurt us, but signal the requirement to focus on quality improvement. Um, and and, and that's, the, that's the strategy that we signed up to in 2009. Um, and it's got three what we hope are interlinked uh, domains that we pay attention to. Safety, um, given the nature of our business, is quite rightly our prime focus. Patients need to be confident that they are going to be treated um, in, a, in a safe manner. Um, and we've got lots of um, improvement goals around um, reducing our mortality rates, reducing hospital acquired infections and, and, and the like. Very strong focus on that. Um, patient experience is about saying, yeah, it's all right, it's important that you're safe, but we actually want the quality of your patient experience whilst you're with us to be better than anywhere else. Better, we, we like everybody else, we're in a competitive market. Um, and we've been looking at things like national patient surveys and, and trying to pull some of those key indicators to make sure that we're, we're top of class in there. Um, and the effectiveness work stream is, um, is the one that really we're focusing on. Um, I probably should say the whole of that, that triangle comes together with a quality board. It's managed at the top of the organisation by our medical director, so it's got senior executive support for it. And each of those three domains have also got a separate executive director who takes responsibility for sponsoring those initiatives. Uh, and I'm the director who's the sponsor for the effectiveness work stream. And what we've done is we've, we've actually hosted our work programme with Mark and Ian and the relationship with the uh, Lean Enterprise Academy, we formally hosted that within the effectiveness work stream. So it's, it's actually in, the, it's hardwired into the DNA of the organisation. It's not just some nice fluffy uh, project that's going on alongside our line management process. It's got, it's got access to the, the top of the uh, organisation. Um, and these are some of the um, characteristics, I think, of the quality improvement initiatives that we've been put in, putting in. Um, and I'll touch, on, I'll touch on some of them because um, Paul and Tanya will be picking some of these up as well. Um, the, the, the mapping and the measurement of the current state is, is, is you know, I feel so bloody obvious it doesn't need to be said, but you'd be amazed how often we didn't actually know we thought we did, but we didn't actually know how our patients entered and moved through the system in the level of, in the level of detail that we really should have done. So there's something about actually mapping and measuring the sort of end-to-end -end patient journeys that, that, that were going on. Um, the, 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 the go and see culture and the involvement of frontline staff and the executive sponsorship we think is really important in, in terms of driving improvement through. Um, executive sponsorship, we passionately believe that frontline staff take notice of what senior people in the organisation take, take notice of. It's no good saying this is important and then going away and not actually being seen to be attending to the improvement goals that we've, we've agreed. So the executive sponsorship is really important. But it is this, this, this harmony you need between top-down 
and, and bottom up. And we've really worked hard to make sure that our frontline managers actually do go and see what is going on on the front line, you know, on the ward, in outpatients, in theatre, and go and see culture so that we can properly visually manage the, um, the organisation. Um, bundle of evidence-based interventions. I guess, I guess this is the flip side of um, what we call them PDSA cycles, where you, your testing change all the time. What we, the approach I think we've gone for more recently that you'll hear about is pulling some what we believe are best practice evidence-based bundles that are known to our industry, I suppose, known to work and, and, and really applying those within the work that you'll, you'll, you'll hear about. Some of them we've been able to lift from places like the Safer Patients Network, which is known within the, the healthcare. There's some, there's some work that's going on at the uh, NHS uh, Institute for Innovation is here, I know. There's, there's work we've pulled off them as well. You know, if it, if, it, if, it, if it works and it's known to work, why not use that evidence-based bundle? But we did struggle we did struggle in the effectiveness work stream with actually pulling some evidence-based bundles, and that's where the Lean Enterprise Academy came in. Um, small tests of change, uh, embedding the improvement and then spreading it is really important, and there's a really nice, healthy tension in the organisation. There's Luddites like, uh, and Alison's laughing because she knows what, there's Luddites like me who just say, right, well, we've made an improvement there, we've reduced our length of stay, let's shut a few beds and get the cash out and, and put it in the back pocket. And there's the, the team saying, no, 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 we've got to embed it, we've got to be confident that it's actually delivering what it says on the tin, we've got to be able to measure it before we start um, spreading it to other areas, otherwise the, 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 the improvement effort becomes too, too dissipated. So there is something about holding your nerve and recognising that this is, this is not easy stuff and it does take, it does take time, um, but you do get there. And of course, continuous measurement at all stages. When you're doing these um, interventions, how do you know that it's actually having an impact? So it's been clear about measuring the uh, before state and the after state and, and keep measuring. So I think that's, a, that's a, a discipline that wasn't in the health service and everything now is measurement, measurement, measurement to be able to demonstrate that what we're saying is working, is demonstrably uh, doing, doing that. Um, effectiveness program influenced by worsening position in the public sector finances. Uh, you, you know, you've probably read a lot about it. Um, We've gone through 10 years, 2000 to 2009. The NHS has gone through a year, uh, 10 years of pretty well consolidated growth. We've been cash, cash rich. And to some extent, the, the requirement for improvement has not been necessarily there. What, what we've often done is just said, oh, we just need a bit more activity. We'll just have a few more docs. We'll have a few more nurses. We'll have a few more operating theatres running. And we've got away with it. Clearly, that old way of working won't deliver for us in the future. Uh, and Andy Burnham was the Secretary of State in uh, 2009, speaking about the challenge for the NHS. And just to give you some figures, nationally to sort of about 2014, we've got to strip out as, an, as, a, as, a, as a sector about 20 billion in efficiencies to keep baseline services uh, running. So that's the nature of the service. Locally, we've got a 5% efficiency saving, cash out to uh, reinvest back into savings just to stand still. Um, so, but global studies saying that, you know, the opportunities are endless, you know, and those are some of the headlines from authoritative bodies saying there's bloody waste in the NHS and healthcare all over the place. Um, and they're there, you know, and I just pull one out. 25% of radiology tests are not necessary. But, you know, when I go to our clinical director in radiology and say, well, let's just take 5% out. Oh, Mark, we couldn't possibly do that. We couldn't possibly, you know. So it really is difficult breaking in to see some of these clinical, um, clinical domains. Um, so locally, where did we decide to start our effectiveness initiatives? Enter stage left, the Lean Enterprise Academy. Um, and we started to think about how we could properly introduce Lean and start to work on this concept of the value chain, which we just 
never heard of, you know, value streams, what, what, what was all that about? We had done some lean work to good effect a few years ago, but it was very much in isolated pockets of the service, medical records, pathology, um, very closed systems. What Ian and Mark challenged us to do was really to think much bigger and say you need to start to map your end-to-end -end value streams. What are, what are your clinical connected processes that are used by high numbers of your customers, your patients? Um, and we had a go at um, interesting use of language, we. You always put we, don't you, when somebody else has done it in the organisation. Tanya produced five, uh, five value streams for us. Um, and in many ways, you know, the big volume ones are the first two up there, which the work you're going to hear from Tanya and Paul about really start to talk about the impact they've had on those value streams. Uh, and the final one on A&E injury patients is what you'll hear from as well uh, from, uh, from Paul. Um, and within those value streams, we decided to focus on reduced lengths of stay. And, and improve patient flow within the, particularly the two big value streams that we've, uh, that we've listed up, uh, up there. Um, why length of stay? Why, why look at length of stay? Basically because it was a pressure point for us and it ticked so many boxes for us. You know, we could deliver more effective and efficient care. We've taken 100 beds inpatient beds out of the system since we've been doing this work. We've saved over two million uh, quid. We might have taken a few too many out, but anyway, that's another story. But we've, we've, take, we've been allowed to take that sort of infrastructure out of our operating uh, baseline. There's also better outcomes. You know, patients with reduced lengths of stay have reductions in all those clinical problem areas, hospital-acquired affections, you know, MRSA, C. diff, things like that. Um, hospital acquired pressure stores, patient falls, um, better outcomes for elderly patients and, and dementia patients who if they have long lengths of stay really struggle to mobilise and, and, and thrive when they go back home or into whatever setting that they're doing. And length of stay has also helped us deliver the regulatory framework. So our, some of our core standards have been, been delivered as well as, as a byproduct. So those 79 KPIs I talked about are starting to be ticked off through our focus work on improving uh, length of uh, stay. So where have we got to? We've, we've delivered a 28% reduction in uh, length of stay for medical specialties. We've taken the 100 beds out that we've told you about and we've delivered the uh, regulatory framework. And we're being told that we're actually best in class uh, according to some independent benchmarking analysis. This is Dr Foster who, who produces a comparative analysis on length of stay performance for similar trusts. So there's 41 trusts nationally that are being compared in the UK. And the red one at the end is good old CHFT and we were nowhere near there when we started um, our, our work.